So I wanted to do a little talk about follow boards. So this is a part pattern I made years ago. This is a casting from it for a guy that wanted to try putting a sight on a putter. Um, don't know if they ever worked out. I've never seen one in a store. But I built about five different kinds for them. Um, this is one I got because there was one left over in the pattern shop when the pattern shop closed. So it was given to me. So you got a, in this an irregular parting line. And for me to build a follow board for it, I made the pattern look just exactly like this. Wood pattern, maple if I remember right, and Bondo. So to get a parting line on here, obviously the parting line is going to go here and around this way and up and follow a line there. This line is not parallel to anything really and you don't know exactly where it is. So I got this piece I made. So just a triangle. This is tapered, slightly rounded edge there. And you take a crayon. This is out of a casino that works pretty good. Best crayon is get one of those uh, lumber marking crayons. And if your wife happens to be a teacher like mine is, you mix it with a bunch of leftover marked up, broke up crayons and melt them together and make one crayon. But basically what you can do then is you will drag this along here, follow it through, and as you go around the part, you know, you keep adding more and more of the crayon until you get a mark exactly, exactly where the parting line should be. So if you're going to make a loose pattern out of it, know that you've got to cut down to that black mark. If you're going to make a follow board for it, which I'll talk about in just a minute, you'll build a follow board to that black line. That would make this the drag, this side would be the cope. In this case I believe the in gates were here, uh, possibly in here, but I think it was in the sides here. So I don't remember now. I made this thing about 40 years ago, so long time. But anyway, you could build a follow board for that. And in this particular case, once we proved the design, he sent it off to have an aluminum match plate made, and I believe there was about four of them on the match plate. So <clears throat> that's the way that works. Now to make the follow boards, just cheap, down and dirty. Another video I showed this one, or I'm going to show this one. Cheap down and dirty follow board. Just basically a piece of half inch scrap plywood I had here. Put an eighth inch there, stuck some Bondo in there, squeeze that part in, squeeze that part in, follow board's done, except for sanding the draft angle on this. No coping down, nothing you have to do special. This is in the drag and it's ready to go. So that's that. You got, uh, depending on how complex you want to get, you can get really simple. A couple of knobs I made, just a piece of flat scrap wood I got, got a hole in the center, drafted the outside, that's done. Same thing here, with the exception that I uh, sanded this square, cut a hole in the center. Put a mark on it, squeeze this in here, oh, come here, and that's ready to go. Uh, down and dirty is all you need for a follow board. Start getting a little more complex. This one was also basically down and dirty, a piece of half inch plywood, cut with a bandsaw, cut out the square, set this where I want it, bonded up to where the parting line was, and it's done sanded the outside edge, of course, and ready to go. And the last one, a little more complicated, <clears throat> but not much really when you think about it. Same process, here's the pattern. Pattern sat like this, this is a drag, 
So you got to somehow support the cope. So this does two things. Follow board is here. We got a support for the cope. Keep it from crushing. That sits in here like this. Follows the parting line. Of course this thing's pretty old. That's why it's warped. This one I made probably close to 20 years ago. Or 15 I think actually. So it's getting warped over time. But it would still work. But again, down and dirty, whatever it takes to get to that position. And uh, cheap as you can make it. Nothing fancy, nothing special. All that's there is to, I was going to make two of these. Got one made and I cut it up for a different uh, video I was going to do. To see what how solid the metal was in there. So that's it for the follow boards. Um, no more coping down. You don't have to cope down. Um, you can use 3D printed patterns and build a follow board for it. You can actually build the follow board if you want to on the computer. And actually designing the follow board on the computer is not necessarily a bad idea, but by the time you get through with the design, get it printed and everything else, be faster in the long run just to make it out of wood. If you're making multiple parts, when you start cutting down on the cope and doing all the different things and building all this stuff up so you can get the part out of the sand, it's just cheaper and easier in the long run to build a follow board. Saves a molder if you got if you're working for a foundry. Saves a molder a lot of time, even for a one-off part. And in the pattern shop, that is the intent is save the molder time. He needs to get the job out the door as quick as possible. He may do it four, five, six times for a so-called one-off part job. Pattern maker only has to do it once. So that's it. If you like the video, go ahead and like it and we'll talk to you later and you guys have a good one. Bye.